So you want to learn how to connect to an Ethereum node. Or maybe you click this video wondering what are the benefits of connecting to an Ethereum node and why would anybody want to do it? At the end of the day, connecting to an Ethereum node allows for a variety of different possibilities that will open up to you. And at the same time, if you're like me and you believe in the future of Web 3.0 and cryptocurrency as well as blockchain technology, at the very minimum, you're contributing to the ecosystem. So in this video, like I said, I'm going to teach you how to connect to an Ethereum node. So first off, let's talk about decentralization. Now, some of you may be familiar with Google Cloud Services as well as Amazon Web Services. Now, these companies set up physical servers all around the world so that users of the internet can create applications, create websites, basically do anything on the internet via these servers. Now, the Ethereum virtual machine is a little bit different because it exists on every device, whether it be a laptop, a desktop, a cell phone, a Raspberry Pi, it exists on all of these devices that choose to run an Ethereum node. These Ethereum nodes connect to the Ethereum virtual machine, allowing for peer-to-peer -peer transactions to transpire without the need of centralized servers. Now, it is possible to run an Ethereum node via Amazon Web Servers or Google Cloud Servers or any other cloud servers that are out there. But in my humble opinion, I feel like that completely defeats the purpose of why some of us get into crypto and why we embrace blockchain technology. At the end of the day, by going that route, you are putting all your eggs into the baskets of Google Cloud Services or Amazon Web Services. And if they choose to change the laws of their servers, even though you're running an Ethereum node on it, at the end of the day, it's their servers. They get to choose what happens. The next benefit is censorship resistant. Now, a third party node can choose to refuse transactions of a particular IP address or a particular wallet that exists. We are currently seeing this unfold right before our eyes. It was just reported about a week ago that MetaMask is intentionally blocking users from Venezuela and Iran. The reason that they're able to do this is because MetaMask is a third party node. If users were to connect directly to the Ethereum virtual machine using their own Ethereum node, they would not run into this problem. Having your own node to submit transactions guarantees that you can broadcast your transactions via a peer-to-peer -peer network. Also important is the fact that developers can upload their own smart contracts to the Ethereum virtual machine without running the risk of their smart contract being tampered with, censored, or blocked for any reason. The next benefit is sovereignty. Now, at the end of the day, most Ethereum wallets nowadays rely on third-party nodes such as Alchemy or Infura for accurate account balances. Running your own node essentially lets you have your own copy of the blockchain. Voicing your choice is another important benefit that comes with running your own Ethereum node. To encapsulate the importance of this benefit, I'm going to take you all the way back to 2016. So, for those of you that do not know, a very infamous hack happened in 2016 known as the DAO hack. The Decentralized Autonomous Organization essentially raised over $150 million worth of Ether via token sales. Due to vulnerabilities within the code, hackers were able to hack into the smart contract and essentially take all of the money. What happened after this hack changed the course of Ethereum forever. The creators of Ethereum voted and decided to roll back the blockchain, essentially giving the victims back their Ethereum. But by doing so, they created a hard fork within the Ethereum blockchain. Now, because of this hard fork, today we now have two different Ethereum blockchains. One is known as Ethereum Classic. The other is known as the Ethereum blockchain that you see now. If you were to go back across both of these blockchains back to 2016, throughout all the transactions, you will see that they actually do merge into one blockchain. That is because, as I stated, there was a hard fork. So what does this have to do with voicing your own choice? Well, essentially, those that were running their own Ethereum node at the time of the fork 
got to choose which protocol they decided to go with. If you were not running your own Ethereum node, but you were holding ETH, you were pretty much out of luck at that point. Also, for those that are staking ETH, running your own Ethereum node essentially allows you to choose your own clients, minimize the risk of slashing, as well as react to fluctuating demands within the network. Staking with a third party forfeits your vote as to which client you think is the best choice. Also, Ethereum 2.0 is looking to be rolled out by the end of this year. If you're looking to stake ETH 2.0, you will actually be required to set up an Ethereum 1.0 node to make that possible. So obviously, there are many advantages that come with running your own Ethereum node. But what are the disadvantages, you might say? Well, in my opinion, there are only two major disadvantages that come with running your own Ethereum node. And to be honest with you, one of them is a limiting belief. The disadvantage that I consider to be a limiting belief is the fact that most people think that running an Ethereum node is complicated. It's not rocket science, guys. It's not quantum theory. It's not coming up with the theory of relativity. It's none of those things. It's actually very simple and only requires a few lines of code to be activated. The second disadvantage of running your own Ethereum node is you can actually buy a device known as the DAP node. Now, this DAP node was created for very user-friendly experiences for those people that are not tech savvy and don't know how to communicate with the computer via a command prompt or a terminal. In my opinion, I don't really want to be paying 1,500 to 2,000 euros for a device with a nice user interface when I could just basically talk to my command prompt or terminal and tell it what to do. So as you can well imagine, in this video, we're gonna do things the old fashioned way. All right guys, so to start off with, just go ahead and open up a new tab and just type in go slash Ethereum GitHub. And it'll take you to this link. You just go ahead and click that link. Now as a fair warning, if you do not have Go already installed in your computer, you can just go ahead and type in install Go on another tab and click that first one where you could download and install the Go programming language. Go is just short for Golang, which is a language created by Google, which is what we will be using to go ahead and run our Ethereum node. So it's only a few easy steps to go ahead and install Go on your computer. Once you do that, let's go ahead and clone the repository into our computer. So we're gonna copy. And next, we're gonna make a folder called Ethereum node. And we're gonna do it via our terminal or command prompt. So I'm gonna make a directory called Ethereum node. And then I'm gonna go ahead and CD myself into this directory. From here, I'm going to go ahead and clone the repository by typing in git clone and pasting the link that we got from the GitHub. Now, as I stated previously, if you do not have Go installed on your computer, you will actually get an error at this point in time. So if you do get that error, go ahead and follow the instructions that I stated earlier. All right, once that's done, let's go ahead and open up the Go Ethereum folder. From here, let's make a list of all the different components within this folder, just to make sure that everything is there, clear and visible. Next, let's go back to our GitHub and scroll all the way down for further instructions. Here you can see we get instructions on how to compile the Go program. So I'm going to copy this command, make all, go back to my terminal and type it in. Once that is finished, we're gonna go ahead and build our geth or go Ethereum by grabbing this command make geth and inputting it into our terminal. As you can see, that was pretty quick. Now notice this line, it says run, and it gives you a file path to launch a geth. So we're actually gonna do exactly what it says. We're gonna copy that file path, launch it.
Now, as you can see, guys, we are officially running our own Ethereum node. Congratulations. You did it. It's really not that hard. I told you it wasn't rocket science. Real quick, guys, before I let you go, if you got lost at any point in this tutorial and you would like something to reference to, just go ahead and click this link. I'm going to leave it in the description. And it goes over more detail as to how to run your own Ethereum node. And also, I would like to show you one more link, which is etherscan.io slash node tracking. Now, this page offers a lot of data for all of the Ethereum nodes that are set up all throughout the world. You could actually come here and click on view all nodes. And as you can see, the United States is the leader in Ethereum nodes, followed by Germany, UK, Canada, and Singapore. All right, guys. Well, there you have it. You have officially ran your own Ethereum node. I hope that you believed me when I told you that it wasn't going to be rocket science because, to be honest with you, that took maybe, what, five, ten minutes at the most? With that being said, if you like this content, go ahead and hit that like or subscribe button as well as that push notification bell so you get all my videos as soon as they come out. Also, leave any comments in the comment section about your experience of running your own Ethereum node. That's it for this video. See you on the next one.